Hello everybody and welcome back to Vintage Thursday. So today we are back again with the 550. This is featuring uh, in a lot of videos at the minute but hopefully we're nearly nearly getting there to where I want it to be. So when we fitted the 550, so we fitted the hitch on this uh, a couple of weeks ago and I'm not sure if it made it into the final uh, final edit or not but when we were fitting this lift rod um, I did lift the link arm up um, and watch this rise up and make you know just to make sure nothing touched nothing hit the cab um, and I did wonder if we had quite enough lift um, to, to actually disconnect the, the catches at the bottom whether we had to adjust this nut again because um, the end of this rod is threaded um, internal of this nut is threaded and that's how you adjust your final last little bit of lift height to make sure you can un undo the catches down here um, so I thought well that's a little bit tight um, you know we might have to adjust some it and then as we came to fit the second lift rod um, which I didn't film you know there's no point showing everything um, we put this one on um, and something I hadn't noticed until the, the actual minute I came to fit this rod there's a great big nut on this one taking up the slack which tells us they are out of adjustment um, and you can see you know he is screwed right right down there so obviously the previous tractor this hitch was on um, had to have a bit of a bodge job to make it work but quite well they only put one nut on um, and not that side I don't know because some of it was obviously twisting you know if they had this this much lift more if they, if they had this much lift more on one side than the other some it, some it was twisting somewhere anyway so that is why if anybody noticed nobody mentioned it that is why and um, we didn't show the hitch working right at the end of the video because I was just short on time I had to get finished and um, had to just didn't have time so I you might have noticed this but nobody mentioned it um, and you might have noticed that I didn't show it working but again as yet nobody's mentioned it um, but this was why because right at the last minute um, I noticed this and I thought oh dear but another problem these are screwed right to the end of their adjustment there is no more thread visible here so these can't screw down any farther to take up this bit of slack um, so I'm guessing what's happened over time just everything's just stretched a little bit there is a, a little bit of play down on these pins and in these holes um, but you need a little bit of movement you don't want it tight um, and if if you were restoring it you would probably take that out but at the moment we're not we're just leaving it as it is so as I see it we've got two options and we can either put a little bit more thread onto the rods and then these nuts will screw down farther and give us our extra bit of lift or we can make longer nuts so put another quarter and a quarter of an inch or so onto these nuts and then they will you know that will have the same effect basically of shortening the rods a little bit um, the problem I can see with threading the rods we are then making it unoriginal and should at some point in the future we decide to take the slop out the bottom you know, if we restore it um, we have kind of destroyed the originality and another thing more importantly here you can see a slot in the nut and you might just see in the rod there is a hole for a roll pin to go through so you get your get your length set and then you bash a roll pin through the slot and then it can't turn um, if we put extra thread on these rods and screw it down past that hole we've, we've lost that method of locking so what we're going to do we're going to make some new longer nuts um, because it's easy and it's going to be a fun little project so let's get on so what we're going to do first is take the rod back off you may actually notice these nuts here never got never got done up with a spanner that's because I knew you know it all had to come apart again to get this nut off um, and sort the problem out so save myself a little bit of work there so what we'll do we'll pull this off um, this nut is gonna have to come off and then we're gonna have to put it all back together to work out how long these nuts need to be made so what we've got to do we've got to take it apart somehow um, get this nut off because I don't want to hack at it with a grinder and risk cutting into this a little bit so I think what we'll do before we take it apart we'll try and see if that will unscrew while it's fixed nicely um, because he doesn't appear to be locked on with the roll pin because the slot I think the roll pins are drilled 
square this way um, and the slots on a bit of an angle so let's have a go just to make see if we can uh, unscrew it while it's held firm at the bottom a little bit of oil first not a great deal of clearance here but now we've got our handle on That's the easy option for that one. Oh, he's turning. We're away. Okay, so here's our nut, and there's that one scrap put in back on. So I can see, you probably won't see it on the camera, there's a seized roll pin uh, in, in there, so that'll have to come out before we're finished. So we set the two to the same with just a little bit of thread coming out kind of about there reset our let's get a rag I'm getting all dirty reset our handle See how we get on. Yeah, see, we're right up there, just not releasing. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll put our nut back in and see if we do actually need as much as this extra. We do, we need, we need all of that on the bottom of there. So what we've got to do, we've got to take some measurements from this uh, and this, make a new nut that looks like that, but is that long. Right, so I already know and um, the thread in here is a 5.8 UN, UNF. Um, you might, uh, probably can't see, but it's a fine thread in there. Um, it is made it's an inch, inch bit of bar, so we've got some of that, that's fine. Um, overall length of our nut, 1.3 1 point, 1 inches. Okay, so then if we add our correct nut and the bodge job together, so we get two inches, not sure if that's showing up, two inches and 80 thousandths basically. So we need to make one of these the same length as that. So let's get on.
I think we're going to have to run the die down the thread on this rod. It seems a little bit stiff in places. See, it's gone tight here. Some it's damaged somewhere. There we go, two cleaned up ends. Just gotta tidy up the thread on that one. It doesn't look bad. We'll just try the old nut on it, see if it was the thread damaged. Yeah, see it's going a little bit tight. I think if we just run a die down there just to clean it up. Got our split pin holes cleaned, ready to uh engage in the slots when we need to. Right, so we are on to manufacturing our new nuts now. Um, so this is the nut we just had to get red up to undo. Um, the camera is probably not going to show it, but the thread is actually damaged inside of here, which is why we had to get it so hot. Um, it's just hard to pick up in there. You're not going to see it, but it's damaged anyway. Uh, fortunately, the rods are good. So what we're going to do, knock out two of these. So these are an inch in diameter, and we've got a bit of inch bar in the chuck. So basically what we've got to do is drill and tap, um, put our chamfers on the edge, that is the edge that the rod comes out of this end, um, and then put our slots in as a last job. Okay, so there we go, that's all our holes drilled. So we've got a, <coughs> a tapping size for the 58 UNF uh, up into here, and then we took the clearance size to just over an inch depth. Uh, so we've got plenty of depth at the top there for the thread. We'll do now a part it off, make the second one because then we need to set up our um, lathe, lathe tool to put the, the chamfers on each the put the chamfers on because we've got to have one on each end of the two two nuts so it's just easier to set it all up once uh, and do the four ends together. So what we'll do we've got our length set on our parting tool, uh, part it off, turn it round, tap it from the far tap it from the other end. Um, so we're not tapping so far in, so we can see a little bit more what we're doing. So that's why we're going to tap it afterwards, rather than now.
There we go, there's our first one, half done. Okay, so here are our two nuts. Um, or nut, well, they're not nuts yet, they're kind of on the way towards being nuts. So they're much longer than the originals, as you can see. Um, to take account of this nut that was put on there to take up the slack. So that's what we've got. So the first thing we're going to do, um, put a little countersink in to guide the taps in, um, and then we will change the angle on our tool to, uh, to put the chamfers on the ends just to make them look pretty. Next stage, we're going to tap. So what we've got is a Five eight UNF tap, so that will sit in the little counter sink we've just done, and behind we have got a sprung loaded tap follower just to keep it running square. Plenty of oil on there. Now you just want to do kind of half a turn round and then back off to break off the little chips and keep the pressure on. through now and then we have our nice thread inside ready for a quick trial run on the rod that's going on nicely to the top nearly perfect All right next one okay so the final operation in the lathe uh, is to put these chamfers on so this one um, the bottom is much more pronounced than the top one. That one's just there really just to take the sharp edges off. But this one is there uh, to catch into like the the actual lift arms. So we'll do both bottoms first um, and then we'll turn them around and put the smaller one on top. There we go, our matching pair. Nicely threaded, um, clearance for the rods that end. So the final thing you've got to do now is just put these slots in the top 
and we'll be finished. So there we go, slots cut, bit of cleaning up, get all that wire and filings out. We may have to run the tap through again um, because it was thrown up burrs on the edge of the cut. It may have thrown burrs into the thread. So we'll have to run the tap through just to clean them up. But other than that, first one's finished. Right, so here we go, our two finished, cleaned up and deburred nuts. Um, so what we've got to do now, check. Check the fit on the rods. So this is the rod that we took off right at the start. This is the one that unscrewed easily while it was still on the tractor. Um, as you can see, screws on nicely. And hopefully you can see through the hole, split the, the pin hole lines up with our slot we've put in. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite the same for the second rod so this is the one that we had to get very hot to get it undone uh, it screws most of the way down but it gets stiff a little bit short so what we've got to do um, you can see maybe hopefully it's just a little bit of bunged up it's not damaged I don't think it's just bunged up with rust and stuff that I can't get out with the wire brush so we're just going to run a die down there and um, just to clean it up now that if you remember the nut that we took off of here was a bit damaged inside but I don't think that's damaged the thread uh, it's just a little bit bunged up a bit of rust in here so we'll just take that out finish the job so we put our rod in the lathe um, got a die here so we'll just a bit of oil Just gradually feed it on manually. Just get into the rusty bit now. That is it. And then just back it off. And the moment of truth. Ooh, still gone a little bit tight. Yeah, we are still a bit tight. See how far the thread goes down. Nope, oh, goes all the way, nice and easy.
It goes a little bit tight there. So the camera probably can't see the holes lining up, but we just drop a pin in there. Goes in nicely. So hopefully that's enough adjustment. If not, we could just wind them on a bit with a spanner. Yep, so we'll call that done. Time to uh, reinstall. So there we go, that seems to work. And we still have a little bit of adjustment left. We haven't gone right to the top of our holes. That's all that's left to do now. Uh, pin in to pin in through the slots just to keep it from turning. So what we took out was roll pins or broken off roll pins. Um, I don't have roll pins, I have some split pins. So we'll put them in instead. We'll do the same job. And we put them through from that way, bend them over so they don't catch on the cab. Um, and there's not going to be any sharp bits out this way. It's going to be hidden away around the back. So there we go, job is finally completed. So hopefully that's all the little jobs we, we needed to do on the 550 for the time being. Um, we do still need to change the PTO seal at some point. But that's not quite so important just now. Um, so I will leave it at that. So thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next time.